Praise the Lord. God is good. To you, God is good. To your family, God is good. And today, it'll be good in your life. Everything you have got, the Lord will multiply. Multiple miracles. Multiple touch. Multiple power. And tonight, you will carry gold. And the Lord will bless every life in Jesus' name. I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. To all our congregations in all the countries, all over the continents, everywhere, online, in families, as individuals, children, young people, young adults, elderly people, senior citizens, I welcome every one of you. And I pray that what the Lord has done for you at this time will be multiplied. And it will grow in Jesus' name. The other time we had divine connection. Now this is divine touch. And now something else coming. Next month, by the grace of God, we're going to have divine solution. Now you may wonder. How is it divine solution is going from September 24th and going all the way to October 3rd, I'll tell you. Because of October 1, our independence in Nigeria, Friday. I want to touch your life that October 1 so that total independence. Anywhere, everywhere. And as we celebrate the independence of our country, all the good, all the solution, all the empowerment, all the prosperity, all the security we ought to have in our independent nation that October 1st you'll experience. And because October 1st is Friday, then we don't want to run back home, we want to celebrate on the second Saturday and on the third Sunday. And from that, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or past Sunday, no remnant of any oppression in your life, in your family, in our country, in the continent, in Jesus' name. That's the reason why we have that period. That period will do you good. You know what? You will not die before that time. Clear your calendar and make sure you are there at that time. And for me, when I come to you at that time, fresh anointed. So, supernatural anointing. Let me come back. We're still in Enugu now. And this is the conclusion of this divine touch for total freedom. Tonight, help me. Tonight, help me. Tonight. 
every yoke is broken. All the fetters are shattered. Anything that tied you down, everything is broken tonight in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. We know you are mighty God. You cannot fail. Everything we ask, you are going to grant. You said, while we're still speaking, you will answer. And before we end, you will bring answer to our problems. I pray tonight, everyone in your side will have supernatural energy, heavenly power, and everything remnants of the works of the devil remaining. You will cancel tonight in every life in Jesus' name. Freedom for everyone. Renewal for everyone. Mountain moving miracle for everyone. And Lord, I pray, no one, the little child, the youth, the young adults, the families, husbands and wives, elderly people, senior citizens, no one will miss the miracle touch tonight in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Sit down in the blessings of the Lord. Tonight, we're looking at 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. It says, when you believe, that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Mediator, the Savior, the Redeemer, your substitute on the cross of Calvary. It says you become born again. You believe that Christ came and he came to take your sins away. You believe he is the Christ. He is your substitute and he is your Savior. Then, as you put that faith in him, it takes all your sins away. It takes all your guilt away. It takes all your condemnation away. And you become a born again child of God. What then happens? Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world any overcomer there today Christ comes into you and Christ is the conquering one and as you believe and you are born again and you are connected with the Savior the master the master of every storm and the master of Satan of the world of angels of every living thing you believe that in your heart you accept him into your heart then it says you overcome the world i want to announce to you that today you become an overcomer and then it says this is a victory that overcomes the world even our faith. Tonight is going to be a great unforgettable time in your life in Jesus' name. Let's come to verse 18. In verse 18, we know you will know 
experimentally you will know experientially you will know in a practical definite way you will know we know that whatsoever whosoever is born of God sinneth not what does that mean it means when you are born again God places you in a very good place and then he sends mosquito net around you and those mosquitoes of sin they are not able to penetrate anymore it's like you put corn in a bottle and then you cork that bottle close that bottle and then but a glass bottle and the corn is inside and then the hen, chicken, cock, whatever, they're looking at the, at the corn like this. They want to get the corn. And as they strike, they only strike the glass bottle. You get my point? It will happen to you. The Lord shields you. And the Lord protects you. And the seed that used to come, and say, I am going there. Where are they going? They didn't know you came to this divine touch. And they didn't know things are different now. And so when that scene comes and he sees, look at free corn for me to enjoy. And they want to penetrate. They will not penetrate your life anymore. We know. That whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself. He remains under the mosquito net. He doesn't go out to visit the mosquitoes and to become a feast for the mosquitoes. He keepeth himself. He remains in that bottle in that shield, in that tower, and in that protection of the Lord. And as you remain, he keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. He will not touch you. He cannot touch you again. Because God puts you in his supernatural presence. And no evil will touch your life again. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put his hand, put forth his hand, and touched my mouth. You see, we're talking about divine touch. The Lord himself, the God of heaven, the most high, the powerful one, he puts forth his hand and he touches your mouth. The Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. It's the word of creation. I put the word of creation in your mouth. It's the word of power. I have put the word of power in your mouth. It's a word of decree. I have put my word of decree in your mouth. And whatever you say, according to the promise of God, will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Now, you must understand that as you have come, you have touched the Lord and the Lord has touched you. He has put his word in your mouth. You carry power as you are going back home. You carry authority as you are going back home. And you will not allow any careless word, any curse word, any negative word to come out of your mouth. Because from now on, the word in your mouth will move mountain. If any, anything comes in your body, comes in your life, whatever you say is what you are going to have. If you say, they have come again, I never get anything, 
I go to all those uh, divine touch meetings. Six days were there. And they told us, he didn't say the Bible tells us. He said, and they told us, days and days, but they have come again. If you welcome them back, that's the word of your mouth. But if you say, no, never. You didn't say that. Those things that used to come, the word is now in your mouth. It's the word of authority. It's the word of power. It's the word of the supernatural. It's a mountain moving word. It's a miracle working word. Once you say, no, never, that thing will flee away. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, unto me, unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it tells us, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform it. I will hasten my word to perform it. Performance in your life from now on in Jesus' name. Verse 19. In verse 19, and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Anywhere they are coming from, anywhere, anything they try to do, they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee. You are not alone anymore. You are not isolated anymore. You are not in a far wilderness anymore that the power of the Lord cannot reach you. I will be with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. The river will not drown you. The furnace of Nebuchadnezzar will not burn you. And the lion den of Darius will not eat you up. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. He will always deliver you. You have the name of Jesus, he will always deliver you. You have his word of power, he will always deliver you. Tonight, as we look at those passages, one in John, First John, the other one in Jeremiah. I'm talking to you on becoming unconquerable through the divine touch. Becoming unconquerable through the divine touch. Three things we're looking at. Number one, transformation and victory over the deadly three. One, two, three. Over the deadly three. There are three enemies of every man. Three enemies of every believer. And they are deadly. The deadly three. But thank the Lord. The Lord has given you transformation and victory already in Jesus' name. The secret is be born again. And thank God. If you have not given your life to the Lord yet, you have another chance tonight. And the Lord has been waiting for you. And the Spirit of God will draw you. There will be an urge inside you that you want to follow the Lord. And as you respond, the Lord will say, Welcome. Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the family. And welcome to the wonders of God. Tonight, welcome. When you become a child of God, then you have the power and you have the possibility of transformation and victory 
over the deadly three. Number two, trust in the virtue. It is declared truth. Trust in the virtue. In his declared truth. Number three, and the triumph of victors. Any brother Victor around there? Any sister Victoria around there? Victory, victory. Somebody shout victory. victory. Triumph of victors through the divine touch. Number one now. Number one is transformation. And victory over the deadly three. And as we look at this, the deadly three enemies of a child of God, of a man of God, of a woman of God, of a born again member of the family of God, three deadly enemies. Number one, the world. Number two, the devil number three the flesh but thank god you as you are born again and if you have not been born again you are getting born again tonight you're surrendering your life to the lord tonight and then the power to overcome will come in every one of your lives in jesus name we're looking at the victory that comes transformation and victory over the deadly three number one the victory over the world look at that first john chapter five and verse four first john chapter five verse four for whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world overcoming that's in the continuous present tense. The world might come against you. All the pollutions of the world might want to come into your life again. And all the practices of the world might want to come to your life again. And all those uh, things that the people of the world do may want to come into your life again. But the power within and the authority within will come against it. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up the standard and say, Stop there. That thing will stop. And the pollutions of the world and the practices of the world and all those perditions of the world will not touch your life anymore. Power, power within, power around power in your life anywhere you go however the temptation may be strong as you depend on that power the lord himself will protect you from the world in jesus name uh, look, look at that again it says for whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You know, if your experience of salvation is going to be a bona fide, genuine, definite experience from God, you have to remain free by His grace, by His power, by his presence in your life, you have to remain free from all those things coming from the world. In James chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in the affliction, look at this, and to keep himself unspotted from the world to keep himself you remain in that bottle you don't allow anything to come and you don't come out of there he keepeth himself from all those dirty dirty things of the world and as you do that you'll be preserved 
from all the things of the world that want to come and defile your life. Amen. Look at James chapter 4. I mean, in from verse 4. James chapter 4. We're looking at verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? There are people who go to church regularly, whatever church, good church, high church, deep church, deeper church, glorious church, gracious church, whatever. But they are still in the practices of the world, in the festivals of the world, in the idolatry of the world, in the boyfriend, girlfriend of the world, in the things, the drunkenness of the world. Don't you know adulterers, adulteresses? Don't you know that the friendship and the fellowship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world in fellowship with the world, identifying with the world, drinking their drinks and doing what they are doing, acting like them and moving around like them whosoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God I pray you will not be an enemy of God that's why he gives you the victory over enemy number one deadly enemy and then because of the grace of God in your life, you will be free. I said you will be free. Number two is the victory over the devil. Are you there? And you know, there are people, they say they are born again. They say they are children of, and then they do something devilish. They do something diabolical. They do something, you know, that is damnable, damning the soul. And then you say, ah, my friend, I thought you were born again. How did you do that? Ah, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. The devil does not make you do anything. You do it yourself, and then you give the credit to the devil. From today, born again. Born again. Somebody shout, born again. The devil will not have power over you. You know, when, when somebody becomes a soldier, he dresses different. He walks different. He looks different. He carries himself different. But so, if you're born again, you're a soldier of the cross. And the way you think, and the way you take the promise of God, and the way you walk, the narrow way that leads to heaven, different from the past and when they see the soldier coming all those ruffians will clear out of your way you will have the victory and look at this look at this in first john chapter 5 verse 18 first john chapter 5 verse 18 we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but he that is begotten of god keepeth himself keepeth himself it doesn't go where there are 99 devilish people and he only is the only one that goes into the midst of the devilish 99 people to make 100 he keepeth himself away from them it doesn't go where they are, you know, drinking and dancing in the nightclub and breaking bottles and, you know, killing one another. He keepeth 
himself. It doesn't go where they're using substance and hard drugs, and then they're smoking all those things, and then he says, I'm born again now. I want to go into their means. He keeps himself. It doesn't go into the place where you have prostitutes, and then he's hanging around there. Because that's where the devil reigns as master. Now that you are a child of God, now that you are born again, he keepeth himself. And that wicked one touches him not. You didn't say amen to that one. The Lord will keep you. He will keep you from the devil. He will keep you from all devilish actions. It will keep you from all the activities and all the act actions of Satan in Jesus' name. Can the Lord keep you? Will the Lord keep you? You put yourself in the place where the Lord says, That's my child. He doesn't mix with their crowd. He is mine. He is mine. He is mine. And then he says, And that wicked one touches him not look at something here now is first john chapter 4 verse 4 first john chapter 4 we're looking at verse 4 it says ye of god little children anybody there ye of god little children if you are born again ye of god little children you know the salvation of the adult is the same salvation of the child. You know, you catch a child, he says, I'm born again, and he gave the testimony. Praise the Lord. I came to this divine touch. I am born again, and we are happy for you. And then you find that uh, born again child is telling a lie, blatant lie, open lie. A visible lie that everybody will know this is a lie. And then you say, my boy, come here. I thought I heard you giving testimony that you are born again. Born again people don't tell lies. So it says, sir, I am only a child. And the salvation I have is the salvation of a child. Ah. The gary you take as a child... Is it uh, different from the Gary adult people take? The rise you take as a child, is it different from the rise adult people take? The water you drink, is it different from the water adults drink? No. Salvation is salvation. If you are born again, you are a little child. If you are born again, you are a growing adult. If you are born again, you are a woman. If you are born again, you are a man. Salvation is salvation. And that salvation will make you an overcomer, even at your level in Jesus' name. You find a woman born again, born again saying some foolish things doing some foolish things you say madam come i thought you said you were born again. yes pastor i'm born again but you know now i'm a woman and they tell us that men have nine ribs and women have only seven and we women are the weaker vessel so my salvation is a woman's salvation I know why you are laughing. You are laughing at something person like that. How can that be? Salvation is salvation. I said salvation is salvation. When salvation comes into somebody's life, it comes with transformation. It comes with a change of life. And I pray your salvation will be heavenly. And your salvation will be real in Jesus' name. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Did I hear a good amen there? Greater, greater. When you are born again, it says, I stand at the door and knock. 
if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in unto him. And then I will abide there. I'll fellowship with him. I'll sup with him. When you are born again, Christ lives on the inside of you. And that Christ is greater than every devil anywhere. And he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Three deadly enemies. Number one, the world. Number two, the devil. Number three now is the flesh. Look at this. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 19. Galatians 5, verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh. That's it there. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest. Look at this, look at this. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, verse 21, envies, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like, of the which I tell you before. As I have also told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There are many people that do not understand that word flesh. But the passage makes it clear. The works of the flesh it's not talking of flesh and bone. It's not talking of your skin, your muscles, your sinews, and the thing that make up your flesh. What does it mean? Flesh. Let me show you. Just keep your Bible open. Verse 19, verse 20, verse 21. Flesh. F is filthiness. And it tells us there, it says fornication, adultery, uncleanness. That's the flesh. When there's adultery, when there's fornication, F, when there's uncleanness, that's the flesh. And then L is right there. Lasciviousness. When people, they give themselves to the actions of sin and to the practice of sin. And they just, they dive into the sea, into the ocean of iniquity and transgression. And they don't think about how it will affect their lives, how it will affect their neighbors, how it will affect their husband, how it will affect their wife, how it will affect their children. Lasciviousness, lost or lawlessness. That's the L there. Flesh, F, L, E. You'll find it there. Look at the next verse there. You'll find emulations. And then as you go to verse 21, you will find envies. F for fornication, for adultery, for uncleanness. L for lasciviousness and lust and lawlessness. And then E, you find emulations and envying and excesses. What are the excesses? Wrath, drunkenness, rebellions. You find somebody a little thin, minute, unnecessary, insignificant thing. They fly up in wrath. They're angry. Whatever is in their hand, they throw or they smash. Excesses. The temper is not under control. And then it talks of envies. It talks of, you know, somebody is having something good. And 
he was satisfied with what he had before he saw Mr. So-and-so, before he saw Mrs. So-and-so, and then envy and jealousy, and then emulation. That's the flesh. That's the flesh. The spirit doesn't act like that. That is the flesh. And then is, you find it there, strive, mentions that in verse 20, and seditions, it mentions that that's the flesh. When there is, uh, you know, so much strife, everything, uh, uh, what's happening today? I've not seen a fight today to fight. I've not seen somebody to punch today. I've not seen someone to argue with today. And they find something that will bring strife. What about the man that is beating the wife at home? What about the woman that locks the man, the husband up at home? What about the person that is ill-treating and oppressing, almost killing the maid or the servant living with them? What about the person that, you know, you are learning something mechanic or whatever, or you are learning trade on that them, and they treat you like an animal? That's the flesh. And then he talks of that as he talks about the sedition and the strife. Then he says, and such like, and such like. That means the murders, the variance, the idolatry, the witchcraft. This is the flesh. F, fornication. L, lasciviousness and the others. E, the emulations and the envies. S, the strife and also the seditions and then age you find it in those in that passage you find hatred and heresies and then we join hypocrisy i pray as we come and we say we have the divine touch that brings salvation divine touch that brings transformation the blood of christ we cleanse and wipe and wash everything away from our lives in Jesus' name. You have the victory. I have the victory. Victory over the world. Victory over the devil. And victory over the flesh in Jesus' name. If you've got the victory, let your amen sound like a victorious amen. I can tell you have the victory. And the Lord will maintain that victory in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now. We come to point number two, trusting the virtue in his declared truth the truth that God himself declares it's like a decree once God has said something in a promise in a prophecy and as a privilege for you it's like a decree and there is a divine virtue from heaven that comes along with that declared truth. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. I'm just wondering why the amen is counting. And then in verse 9, then the Lord put his hand, put forth his hand, and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. That's the word, that's the word of truth. That's the word of of power. That's the same word that created the heavens and the earth. It's a creative word. It's a mountain moving word. And it is a supernatural word. I have put my words 
in thy mouth. Verse 12. In verse 12, then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. The word of salvation, I will hasten my word to perform it. The word of healing, I will hasten my word to perform it. The word that crushes the devil and the devil's power out of your life, I will hasten my word to perform it. To hasten means to hurry up. God says in your life tonight, it will not come late. Whatever he has promised, is going to grant you. He will hasten his word and he'll perform that word in your life. That's why I know whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed, shall be delivered, shall be protected, shall be preserved because he will hasten his word to perform it. Isaiah chapter 55. We're reading from verse 11. <clears throat> Isaiah 55 verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish. The word is coming to you. What of power? What of salvation? What of healing? What that will move your mountain? And it will not return back unto God void. It will accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it the word is sent your light tonight it will be done the question I want to ask is this when will that word be performed in your life when Will that mountain be removed out of your life? Okay, let's look at Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 28. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 28. Look at this. Therefore, say unto them, The Lord sent me to you to say unto you, did you hear that one? The Lord sent me to you to tell you what I'm telling you now. Therefore say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word that I shall speak shall be done. Word of salvation, it shall be done. Word of healing, it shall be done. Word of deliverance, it shall be done. Tonight, when you're here, you want to be saved, you want to be born again, the Lord is waiting for you. And if you want that salvation now, wherever you are, raise up your hand. The moment you raise up your hand, it shall be done. If you are sick, lay your hand when you have the problem. Raise up the other hand when you hear the name of Jesus and the final amen, it shall be done. If there's a long-standing problem, 
and then you present it to the Lord tonight and then I confirm it by a word of prayer and I say it is done it shall be done therefore say unto them thus says the Lord God there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore but the word which I have spoken shall be done says the Lord Amen your life today, amen. Yeah. Your family today, amen. Yeah. Concerning that person in the hospital that you are concerned about, as we speak the word here, I send the word to that man, to that woman on the hospital bed. It shall be done in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 6, reading from verse 18. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, chapter 6, verse 18. That by two immutable, unchangeable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. Impossible. For God to lie, which we might have a strong consolation. The consolation we have is not an ordinary consolation. Okay, maybe it will happen. There's no maybe in the word of God. It will happen. We have a strong consolation who have Pledge for refuge to lay hold on the hope that is set before us. And thank God you are going to get a miracle today. You know, some people say, I don't know how to get a miracle. When somebody says, Come and get a cup of water, I don't know how to get a cup of water, just get up come and then stretch up your hand, the water will be given to you. The miracle will be given to you. The salvation will be given to you. Come and receive. You will have. It's impossible for God to lie. If he said, come, I will give you rest. I'll give you salvation. I'll give you hope, I'll give you deliverance, I'll give you healing, I'll give you prosperity. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then he says, surely, surely, someone shall surely. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you will live with God forever and ever tonight is your night point number three now we're looking at triumph of victors through the divine touch triumph triumph somebody shout triumph the triumph of victors through the divine touch. Come to Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. For behold, I have made thee. While you're sitting down there, I have made thee. While you are praying, I have made thee. While you accept the truthfulness of the word of God, I have made thee this day, this day, this day, it will not pass you by. I have made you a defense city, 
and an iron pillar abrasive walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah against the princes thereof against the priests thereof against the people of the land you see in life at home if you are afraid of the people around you they are afraid of your wife you are afraid of your husband you are afraid of the children all the things in your heart all your vision all your dream all the possibilities in your life that ought to come out you see everybody around you surrounding you like enemies you are even afraid to talk you can't bring out any vision or dream and then you go out and your neighbors around living with you you look at them like this their faces terrify you you can you've taken a decision i've decided to follow jesus no turning back no turning back the walls behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back god is preparing a kingdom I will be there, no turning back, no turning back. Then you come to your neighbors and they look at you like this. Then you forget your salvation, you forget your commitment to the Lord, and you forget the decision you have made because you see everybody as enemies. You go to school, and while you're studying, ah, I can add book war first class no play every day read 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 uh-huh he wants to collect all the A's as they make fun of you if you become afraid all your desires all your aspirations everything you want to do everything will be drowned in the sea and then you're selling in the market and they come around, they're walking up and down, and they're looking at what you are selling, and they're making some bad comments. You are afraid everywhere, at home, in the community, everywhere on the street. Your life is bought down with fear. A person like that will not fly, will not go up. That's why today, as we come to this final session of divine touch supernatural touch will come on you in jesus name all the people you were afraid of before they will be afraid of you for behold i have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar bracing walls against the whole land against the kings of judah against the princes thereof against the priests thereof against the people of the land no fear you will climb every mountain before you will achieve every vision the lord has given you you know after healing yes healing is good when you were blind you couldn't see the mountain now a miracle has taken place your eyes are open and then you see the mountain the next thing to do open your eyes and run and climb that mountain and i see you on top i said i see you on top what's the use of open eyes if you cannot walk in the narrow way what's the use of the open eyes if you cannot climb the mountain what's the use of the open open eye if you cannot write what you have in your mind to write what's the use of the open eye of the healing of the strength if you cannot use that strength and go to the top of the mountain of God you will rise higher then he tells us here, uh, look at um, chapter 
15 of Jeremiah and in verse 20 Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20 and I will make thee unto the people a faced prison wall I'm waiting for your amen and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee you know thank you little boy there. sometimes somebody says I don't want to fight I just want to be gentle and